thank you so much for sitting down with me today and talking with me about your whole career. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, one thing I really want to, like, get into is how do you go from Denmark to L.A.? Um, What is your journey thus far? (laughs) Well, it was a long flight to say (laughs) that. But no, seriously, um, I I was just born there, uh, and and, uh, one of my parents was from the U.S., and one of my parents was also in the entertainment industry. So uh, it was just like the person, they met one of my parents over there while traveling, but it was best to be in the U.S., and that's how that happened. Okay, and then um, your bug for acting, how did you get that? Um, I went to Little Red Schoolhouse in New York, uh, and it was basically an artist school. And at the age of six, I won the role of Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. And the, and my family said at the age of three, I was actually um, imitating commercials. Like, no more tangles, mommy. <laughs> and so they knew then. <laughs> that that was, you're supposed yeah. to be on screen. Oh, yeah. I was <laughs> imitating everyone. In fact, when my mother had told me, please don't give her a book because be careful who the character is because she's going to metamorphose into that character and that would actually happen. So we had to monitor what I read as well. That is great. So you were always able to tap into a whole another character and always able to mm-hmm. adjust I play a wide, wide range, of, range of characters. Wow, that's great. Now, um, can you please tell me about being on screen? How did you get your first role? What was that all about? Or... My first role um, was actually in a music video when I was 16. What people do for money. <laughs> <laughs> no, so you were a background girl. No. Or I was were a, you I a was, like, video girl? I was a principal. Okay, okay, well, let's go back. I actually started as a rapper. No. Yeah, I was an uh, opening act, and you won't believe for who. For who? MC Light. No. <laughs> Mm-hmm. The MC Light? Mm-hmm. Okay, so what did you do? You have to tell me the story. It, it was a fraud. Like, okay, so I told you I play a wide range of characters, right? Mm-hmm. So what happened was I was living in London, so all of a sudden I come back from London, I have an English accent after being there for six months. <laughs> I absorbed the culture. My hair was wily, you know what I'm saying? And I'm just like doing running around. I'm like, I'm London, I'm England, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and clothes and everything. And Next thing I know, some people spot me in a park uh-huh. in Chicago, and they're like, do you rap? And I'm like, yeah, you know? So you're like, listen, I'm and asking next thing you know, I'm like rapping. And um, I'll never forget, we were on tour, okay. and uh, Too Short came up to me. Uh-huh. And he said, he walked across the stage, and he said, shouldn't you be modeling or something? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I had more dancers than MC Hammer. Five dancers, and then I had my own hip hop show, MC Go, because I went from Miss Two and the Crew to MC Go. Did um, yeah, I, I uh, yeah, David Hollister, he sang on one of my tracks. So wait, you went from Dorothy to, <laughs> to a rap. headlining for MC Light. It was by chance, like literally, my manager got me on this tour, and I just happened to open up a couple times for MC Light. I mean, it was crazy. That Salt and crazy. Pepper, Will Smith, everybody was on this tour. So wait, I have to Bismarcky. This. How do you go from Headlining to MC Light, being with Biz Marquee, being with Too Short, to... Being a rapper, like a fake rapper? Yes, I was a fake rapper. Um, well, that, like I said, I play this wide range of characters. Mm-hmm. I, I, I literally have about 50 characters I do. And okay. that was one of the characters. I'm a rapper. From England. I, was, I never even... I lived there so for wait, six months. So did you do the English accent? Oh, I did it all. I, have, I, I do a lot of accents, so I did... A gamut of accents. It was all it. one big joke to me. I love it, but I'm trying to piece this all together. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to understand this. So then I was on tour. I was Vanessa Von de Pont <laughs> in in Shelley Garrett's uh, play. So I did Vanessa. I did that. I, I did um, the New Federal Theater on stage. I did all of these plays and shows. So literally, uh, I can <laughs> have like 50 characters. <laughs> these are just characters I play throughout my life. Okay. So. <laughs> But I don't understand, like, I want to understand how you went from playing these characters and being a rapper, being Dorothy, being... Just switching gears, like Everyone. Um, how do you do that? You're in... Are you in New York still at this time, or where are you at? I where was in are you Chicago. Located? You're in Chicago. in Chicago. So you go from Chicago, and then you eventually end up in New Orleans. How does that happen? Okay, so I was 
I was in New York and I was doing theater, uh, Little Red Schoolhouse, theater, music videos, decided I wanted to go live in London. I actually lived in London. I don't know if you guys know who uh, Boy George is. I do, I do, I do, I do. Oh my gosh, yes. So I happened to just be over there in London with like Mikey Craig and all of them. He's in Boy George. I was at MTV parties when I was like 17. We were hanging off chandeliers like way before you guys had mastered it. Mm -hmm. So I did that, left there. I went to New York, back to New York. I said, hey, I'm done with New York. I'm gonna go to Chicago. I go to Columbia Film School. And what? And next thing you know, I'm living out all of these characters that I wanna do because I'm like, do I wanna act? Um, I, I, I don't know, I know I want to act with what kind of film, I, I don't know, it was where I got my first movie. So I just was finding myself, and then I leave there, and I come to L.A., and I'm doing all these sitcoms, mm -hmm. and, um, and then uh, there was a writer's strike, and then I end up in New Orleans, and then I have a different journey in New Orleans. Now, can I mean, you tell me about your journey in New Orleans? Because New Orleans, yeah. weren't you there when Katrina happened? Um, or were you around when it was post-Katrina? So mm. can you tell me... Well, yeah, I was and I wasn't. I was there. I was working on a movie, so I had to go to New York, but I was bouncing between L.A. and New Orleans, so okay. I was down there just filming a ton of movies, and then I uh, ended up opening an acting studio down there, what? a talent agency, so a management company, and a little tiny production company. I would have done the PR company, but I just didn't have enough time. So. Was this a part of the characters? <laughs> no, that, I actually passion? did that. They were calling me Susan DePass down there. I did that for real. I love it. And so you created an acting studio out there. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I found very amazing is you have fostered some amazing people that have come out of your acting studio. Oh, don't make me name drop. <laughs> Please. I, people, <laughs> need to know. people need to know these amazing people. Um, uh, I hate to name, I, okay. So I don't, it's uh. not name dropping, it is showing your craft because it's actually you being able to mentor a person and to develop them into the person that they have become Okay. on screen with no one knowing that you are behind them. Okay, so can, I got you. Can we just come from that point? Okay. I don't want it like a name dropping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't want to. Yeah, I, yeah. So even I. Even though you can do that if you want. I, okay. Okay. So there were a ton of actors that came through my studio. Um, the biggest one, uh, obviously everybody knows, is Jason Mitchell, who mm -hmm. starred on uh, Winter Star on his Easy E. And then actually we have someone in the studio right now, Jamil over here, Jones, who was very instrumental as well in Jason uh, Mitchell's career. I helped him get his agent. Um, Jamil shot his headshots. Uh, he took acting classes at my studio. I connected the dots to him for him so that he could, he was shucking oysters or doing whatever, we take him to auditions. So it was like we really wrapped our arms around Jason, but not just Jason, there was like so many more. We had Graylin Banks, who uh, came through the studio, he's working, we had Nikoi Banks, he's a teacher, we had Clyde Jones, we had Dana Gurrier, she went on to star in Jane on Chain. I have a little Jesse, La Jesse. Mm -hmm. He ended up playing 50 Cents in a movie, his first movie, like when I tell you from the kids, I had Taylor Ruffin who went to star in Bentley's show, uh, Bentley Kyle Evans show, my parents, my sister, and me, and actually she came out of my studio and that was a huge thing because he was producing this show, I think with Debbie Allen directing it, and my little girl, I coached on the material, I said just imitate me, and she got the role, she beat out everybody. Wow, mm -hmm. so you have inspired so many people. Yeah. You have push so many people to go towards what they want to do. What is the advice that you would give <clears throat> someone that wants to become an actress? Um, I, I think my advice looking back in retrospect would, um, in retrospect, I think it would be to stick with one thing and master that and then move on. Like for me, I did, I was a dancer, I didn't even mention that. I was touring across the country as a, as a dancer. So I did it all. <laughs> I love it. You did it all. So I was a dancer. I was a theater actress. Um, I did print work. It was boring, so I stopped that um, in Chicago. Um, commercials, national commercials. I got a couple nationals running right now. Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't mention that, but yeah, I do. Um, so you went from acting to producing. What made you transition into producing? Um, I'm still an actor, always will be an actor. That will never change, that's the constant. Um, but I did wanna see what it was like to be on the other side. 
to see if I could add something else to my resume. Mm -hmm. And um, and mostly it, it came from wanting to develop projects that I wanted to be in. I came out to LA and I didn't really particularly care for what I was reading for. And it, it, and it had, I think I just wasn't getting the opportunity to read for certain things. I'm just coming back to LA. And I was like, I could create what I wanna be in. Mm -hmm. And you know what I mean? And still audition. But then the creating what I wanted to be in started to, to, to become a full-time around-the-clock thing. And I said, so let me step back as an actor, just take a hiatus and intern as on producing. And now all of that is done. I've got some producing credits. And now I'm back on both sides, actor-producer. That's literally inspiring because it shows that you still have the acting bug, but you decided to be a producer too. Um, you have gone through so many things. Mm -hmm. You have gone through so many glorious days, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you have seen rainy days. Mm -hmm. Can Absolutely. you tell me about one failure in particular that has been a monumental change in who you are today and has affected you? Mm, I I think that I, um, for me it was not 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 knowing how to. Surrender to win. I, I, I couldn't for the life of me do that. And it wasn't until I surrendered that, that life became so beautiful and so full. Yeah. And so I, I think that was one of the hardest challenges for me because, you know, you, learn, you know what you know. Mm -hmm. and, and to do things that you're not used to, it's like, whoa, I'm not used to that. Um, now, has this been something that, like, happened recently, or at what stage of your career did you realize that you need to just surrender? It, I think it got to when, when I started to become my, my own worst enemy, like, I wasn't able to become my best self, mm -hmm. um, then I realized, you know, the, some of the things that you're doing that you don't want to do, but you're doing them anyway because that you just don't know how to not do those things mm -hmm. are are going to be what kills you or ultimately what is the demise of you. And one day I had to take a hard look and go, which path do I want to go? Do, do I, do I want to uh, live a life where I can mentor and give back and become my best self? Or do I want to stay over here in this lane where it's easy to fail? And what does what do I need to remove out of my life to become my best self? And when doing this, mm -hmm. um, are there any books that you've read mm -hmm. um, that has impacted you mm -hmm. or has had that impact of, you know what, I need to become my best self. I need mm -hmm. to surrender and I need to... Oh, absolutely. It is. And what books would you recommend for anyone that is currently on this track and like they're like, you know what, I need to surrender. Well, the book that served a purpose for me is a book that only people who have gone through what I've gone through, we read this particular book. It is our book. Um, uh, other than that, it was just... And this is our. And, and if I had, if I don't read this book, if I don't do what I need to do, then I can't live these promises. It just doesn't manifest. So this book is just for a certain group of people, which I'm in that group. Um, there is a. But as far as books, I would read just stuff on people who were successful. But I'll tell you this: if you're dealing with things inside of yourself, you can read all the books you want, but until you actually they may inspire you, but sometimes you just need outside help. If you have a, a eating problem, reading a book about getting skinny may not help you. You probably need to go get some help. If you have an addiction problem or you have a gambling problem or whatever it is, you probably need to go get some professional help. Mm -hmm. A book is only going to go so far. Awesome. And last but not least... Mm -hmm. What advice would you tell your younger self? So I know that there's advice that you would tell individuals oh, currently coming up, but what advice would you tell your younger self? If you can look back at that young little girl that played Dorothy, mm -hmm. what advice or 
experience would you be like, you know what, this is what, you, what I wish I knew? I have a picture that sits, um, you're gonna make me cry. I have a picture that sits by my bed. It's like a huge picture. I, th I think I must have been maybe six or seven in that picture and it was my very first headshot. And it's such a dramatic shot and these, all you see are these big eyes, right? <laughs> Every night I look over at that picture and I, and I tell that little girl, I say, I love you. I love you. And because I'm able to love the little girl that was broken, it has done so much for the woman that I am today. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I love you. Aww. And thank you so much for sitting down with me. It's an and honor. Thank you. And telling me your journey telling me everything you've gone through. Thank you. I really, really appreciate it. Aww. And thank you. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs>